الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and good morning brothers and sisters instagram fam friends and followers of as-safi and welcome to another episode of our series revert reflections and another installment uh, of our series under the theme what sets islam apart from other faiths and over the last uh, few days we've been mentioning uh, some of the things that set islam apart from other faiths and specifically what we mentioned was having the quran and sunnah having the literal word of god and the tradition and the tradition of our beloved prophet the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our hands impeccably preserved this is something that no other religion no other faith group can boast and we mentioned some of the implications of that and what that requires and necessitates from us how it should reflect in the practice of our islam underscore that we talked about when we talk when we're talking about implications of having the quran and sunnah the words of of allah and the traditions of his messenger in our hands and perfectly preserved what are the implications of that meaning how should that reflect in our practice of islam so we started talking about that yesterday we mentioned four implications and today i want to mention one more but before i mention an implication there are a few ayat from the quran and one hadith uh, which we mentioned previously which i want to mention again the ayat are new i don't think i mentioned them previously but the hadith uh, is something that we mentioned previously but we want to repeat because it's pertinent to what we're going to say today So the first ayah is from Surah Ali Imran in which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Quran al-haqqu min rabbika fala takunanna min al-mumtarin fala takun min al-mumtarin He says this is this is the truth from your Lord so do not be of those who doubt This is your Lord this is your God this is your master this is your owner this is your creator saying what I have revealed to you is the truth so do not be from the people who doubt what i'm telling you doubt what i've revealed to you this is your lord telling you this telling you he shouldn't have to tell you but basically telling you trust me you can trust me you can trust me more than you can trust created beings who lie created beings who err this is your lord telling you trust me then i want you to contemplate the ayah or i want us all collectively to contemplate the ayah which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ha antum haula'i hajatu حاججتم فيما لكم به علم فلم تحاجون فيما ليس لكم به علم والله يعلم وانتم لا تعلمون الله he says here you are disputing about that which you have little knowledge of which is wrong but even worse why do you then argue concerning that of which you have no knowledge Allah knows and you do not know what's the message there brothers and sisters The message is is that people have a tendency to speak about things that happened in the past but they weren't present. They didn't witness those events. And they speak about them with very little knowledge. They may even speak about them with a hidden agenda to paint themselves or people who look like them or people who practice their faith in a good light and to and to pra- and to paint people who don't look like them and don't speak their language and don't follow their culture and who don't practice their faith in a bad light they have these hidden agenda these hidden agendas these ulterior motives in doing that and so they speak about historical events perhaps in this one example and they speak about them erroneously and Allah says they have very little knowledge about this but they speak about it anyway and that's wrong but he says even worse they speak about things that they have no knowledge of and they have no way of knowing it except through revelation so for example they speak about spiritual matters if they speak about what's going to happen hereafter they speak about what makes allah happy and what makes him angry they speak about these things and then allah he closes the eye by saying allah knows and you do not know which means you have to when it comes to these matters you have to defer to allah Pay attention that the message is that you have to defer to Allah because he knows and you created beings you don't know. 
Contemplate with me, brothers and sisters, the next verse, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمُحَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلْ اللَّهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ عَمَّا جَاءَكَ مِنْ الْحَقِّ Allah says, we have revealed to you, O Prophet, the book in truth, as a confirmation of previous scriptures and as a supreme authority which supersedes them. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed, and do not allow their whims and fancies, and do not follow, I'm sorry, do not follow their whims and fancies instead of following the truth which Allah has revealed. So here Allah is telling us that yes, people from other faith groups have received revelation. But Allah revealed the Quran to confirm the truth that remains in those scriptures after so many years of corruption and interpolation were basically uh, implied, I'm sorry, applied to them. So the Quran comes to confirm whatever truth remains, the remnants of truth. But it also supersedes, it's the supreme authority to say what is truth and what is falsehood. So there's no need to what? To refer to those other scriptures. There's no re need to refer to in, in spiritual matters. Matters related to religion, there's no need to refer to anyone other than Allah because what he has given us confirms whatever truth lies in the previous scriptures and also it undoes and repudiates and debunks the falsehood that has been added to and incorporated into those scriptures. And the Prophet said in the hadith which we mentioned uh, a few days ago, he said when he saw Umar radiallahu anhu reading some pages from the Torah, or asking about whether or not we could basically take some of the narrations from the other the non-Muslims and incorporate them into Islam. The Prophet said, antum kama al -nasara. He said, are you confused? Have you become confused as the Jews and Christians became confused? Biha I have brought you the revelation from God unblemished. I brought you it. I didn't put any of my own thoughts in it, my own philosophies, my own opinions. I brought it to you, I brought it to you unblemished. You can trust me and you can trust what I brought. The prophet, the most honest person, the best of mankind is basically telling us Muslims, you can trust me. Why do you not trust me when I've been trusted, I've been entrusted by the Lord of the worlds. Then he says, to emphasize, he says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مُوسَ حَيًّا مَا وَسِعَهُ إِلَّا إِتِّبَاعِي He said, even if Moses were alive today, he would have no choice but to follow me. O Muslim, you have no choice but to follow me. You can't go on your own. You can't do your own thing and then say, I'm Muslim. You can't do your own thing, personalize, make a personalized religion and then call it Islam. You can't do that. Because even Moses, who was given a scripture, and he was one of the greatest messengers of Allah, if he were alive today, would have to lower himself, humble himself, and follow the messenger of Allah وسلم, and follow his sharia, his law. So what is the implication? What's the final implication I want to share with you after saying all of this, brothers and sisters? It's that the Quran and Sunnah must be viewed as absolutely true. And therefore, be considered the point of departure, the gauge by which truth and falsehood are measured, not the other way around. What we have to start doing from now is deferring to Allah. And we have to stop holding, basically putting Allah, His Quran, and putting the Messenger, His Sunnah on trial. That other people are saying, other ideologies are saying, philosophies are saying, disciplines are saying, something other than what the Qur'an and Sunnah is saying. And so now the Qur'an and Sunnah are on trial. They have to prove that they're right and these other philosophies are wrong. It's the, that's, it should be the opposite. We defer to Allah and the Messenger. They are right and these other philosophies and other ideologies have to prove them wrong, which they'll never be able to do because the Qur'an and Sunnah are the absolute truth. Muslims nowadays, brothers and sisters, and we fall victim to this as converts because we came out from those philosophies. We came out of atheism. We came out of uh, liberalism. We came out of Christianity and Judaism. We came out of these other faiths and other philosophies. 
And our worldview and our view of life and life after death has been tainted by that. And so Muslims nowadays, and we're included in this, they get told that the Quran says and the Sunnah says, and their reply is something like this. Some of them say, that's ahistorical. The Quran says that? Oh, that's ahistorical. It's not consistent with the historical record. That's what they'll say. Or they may say, but science says otherwise. Yeah, the Quran says that, but science says otherwise. They say, oh yeah, the Quran says that? Well, you know what? But that's illogical. It doesn't make sense. Brothers and sisters, the Quran is the truth. And the Prophet spoke truthfully. He was incapable of telling a lie. And both the Quran and Sunnah are revelations from who? From the Creator. Now ask, we have to ask ourselves, take a step back and ask ourselves, how can we allow his story? What is history? History is a creation's version of what happened. A creation's version of what happened, which can be tainted by that creation's ulterior motives and hidden agendas. How can we allow that to supersede the version of the creator? What is, how can we say when Allah created science, how can we let the science that Allah created supersede, overrule the creator? Allah created logic, so how can we allow creation to tell the creator, you're right about this, you're wrong about that. Brothers and sisters, at some point, we have to use our brains and reflect on what makes sense. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Especially if we say we want to do the Muslim thing. We want to submit to Allah. We want to follow this faith, which as we said, miraran, we've said it repeatedly. This is a faith which is unique and distinctly different from other faiths. It is a faith that has many features which set it apart from other faiths, and this is one of them. And if we want to follow this faith, then we have to be distinctly different from other people. Our view has to be distinctly different from other people, from other faiths. Other people, Christians and Jews, will say this all the time. They'll read scripture and say it's illogical. They'll say it's ahistorical. They'd say it's they contradict science, and they won't follow it. That's not the way we as Muslims are supposed to operate. The truth is from your Lord, so do not doubt. Allah is saying, oh believers, you can trust me. Are we going to be the people who trust Allah? Or are we going to be the people who contradict Allah and doubt him after he says he cannot be, he should not be doubted? Think about it, brothers and sisters. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll see you again tomorrow. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakan bin Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته